Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. At, uh, uh, this uh, Tuesday, we've got a, this cold front rolling on through. Very, very uh, busy and active weather pattern ahead that we're going to be looking at. We've got a couple of storms uh, that uh, are in the mix. And uh, we also have some uh, active weather in Europe too. We're going to take a look at that. It seems like everybody wants to participate in this uh, very cold pattern that's going to be developing. First off, let's go real quick through what's going on at the moment as of 6 o'clock Eastern Time. And we do have uh, some uh, heavy showers and uh, might even be a few rumbles of thunder in this mix here uh, with this cold front uh, that is moving across Pennsylvania. And uh, those showers, we've been getting kind of some scattered activity here in my neck of the woods. Uh, but you can see the steadier and heavier showers out to the west and there's like there's a little bit of line of downpours here in the yellows on the radar echoes. This is all going to be moving through uh, later this evening and overnight over the coastal areas of uh, New Jersey to southern New England and then the front will move offshore late tonight and take all of this out of the way and then we're going to start the process of the uh, let's call it a stair step decline in temperatures over the next couple of days and this weather front is going to be playing a role uh, in our weather going forward. I want to uh, put up the uh, satellite view of the West because uh, as all of this is happening, uh, we are seeing the weather in the West calming down. And this is very important to our weather in the East. If you, if you notice, there's this big upper low that's sitting out on the far left, and that is driving moisture in the Pacific almost straight south to north. That is actually the back side of this upper ridge that's developing in the western part of the United States. It's going to be building up through western Canada. And this sets up the deep trough that's going to be uh, in the east. You can also see a stream of subtropical moisture coming in off the Pacific and crossing over into parts of Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. And there's actually going to be uh, some snows uh, in parts of northern Mexico here uh, over the next few days as that cold air, uh, that, that this first shot of cold air, settles fairly far to the south. Uh, so uh, the uh, extent of this cold pattern is going to be pretty wide. It's not going to be confined to a small area. And, and let me just point out, by the way, that uh, we're not going to get, at least here in my area, uh, it's not going to get frigid right away. I think that comes next week uh, when uh, other things are going to start happening uh, with regards to uh, the uh, action in the upper atmosphere. But we are going to get cold enough to set us up for the first snow threat. And we're going to take a look at that and, and show you how this plays. And this snow threat, I believe, is going to be confined uh, to the coastal areas from uh, New Jersey uh, on up to coastal southern New England. Uh, it, but we could wind up seeing it extend a little bit further inland. So let's look at this and uh, we'll see where we're going uh, with all of this. And let me, uh, I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so everybody can kind of, I like, I like that we, you know, you should be able to see the date. If you want to follow the dates along, the date of the maps along, it's right across the top. So this way uh, we're not getting lost. So here's our GFS model. And we've, we have this cold front right now coming into western Pennsylvania. You notice the model uh, does indicate a very narrow band where it may change to a little sleet or wet snow. It's not going to make a big difference here. But uh, the front moves through and it stalls. It does, by the way, change over to snow up in northern New England for a little bit. And then we start to see that colder air coming down from the north. The lake effect machine will get turned on to some degree. Uh, I think it gets turned on stronger as we go through this forecast period. But the first focus is going to be this front that stalls out to the south. Now, by the time we get to Friday morning, uh, you can see on the GFS that the uh, area of moisture and rain that runs up from the Gulf of Mexico in, through the southeast and up into southern Virginia, and then it runs out northeast from there. There's drier air to the north, colder air also. Uh, marginally cold. It is going to be below average by the time we get uh, to Friday. Again, it'll be a stair-step decline. Now, uh, with these fronts, sometimes what happens is they the uh, model tends to push them out too far east and south. And 
it, we'll, we're going to watch that carefully. Um, a number of the GFS ensembles are north and west of this positions, and uh, over the last um, month and a half, we've had a couple of instances with weather fronts that have moved offshore, and it looked like they were just going to go goodbye and no issues, and then they wind up being uh, further west, and the wave development winds up being further west, and we've gotten caught a couple of times in my area with uh, some rain that wasn't indicated uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, was uh, a perfect example of that, where over Long Island uh, there was about uh, half an inch to an inch of rain in some places. But uh, we'll see if that's going to happen again. Uh, when we put this in motion, you, you can start to see a wave develops here east of North Carolina. Now, it, the uh, operational GFS, which I'm showing you, has the low going out uh, to the northeast. On the northwestern fringe of that is a narrow band of snow that uh, develops uh, Friday night into Saturday morning. As the low uh, the pressure drops in the, the wave, uh, some colder air gets drawn into it. So you've got this band of snow that basically runs from about Boston to New York City. This is the back edge now. Boston to New York City to uh, Philadelphia. This is not a big event, okay? Uh, it's not even a moderate event. If this plays out literally, it would uh, be uh, on the order of maybe somebody getting a coating to perhaps uh, an inch or two in that band. Now, uh, one of the things we're going to watch out for is if this uh, wave and this frontal boundary is a little bit further to the northwest, because that could push some higher measurables uh, north and west. And then, of course, by Saturday afternoon, it's done. Now there's disagreement too with some of the models in terms of the wave coming out. The NAM has a slightly different view of this. Um, it has uh, a, a weak f lead wave that goes out and kind of holds the energy back longer. So that might have some implications with the energy that's dropping down from the Great Lakes. So the NAM would sort of paint this uh, different kind of scenario that might actually wind up being a bit more threatening. But uh, I'm not ready to go on board with that. Let me show you the, the uh, precip amounts here. Uh, we're going to use the 24-hour precip. And you can see it's actually pretty generous. This is through uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon total precip on the GFS has a half an inch of liquid over eastern Long Island and touching coastal New Jersey. But notice the sharp boundary of the back edge uh, that runs just to about New York City to just east of Philadelphia to about Boston. So there would be a, a fairly sharp cutoff. And of course, there's always the outside chance that some areas right near the immediate coast could wind up getting a bit more. I feel fairly comfortable with the idea that this could produce a coating to an inch or two right now. But uh, I'll pull up the uh, ensembles of the GFS. And uh, this is actually much more robust. Uh, th these are This is 24-hour precipitation. And... Uh, it actually would argue that the back edge of the snow could wind up being west of Philadelphia uh, on up into uh, northwest New Jersey and north and west of Boston. And, and that half inch cuts across central Long Island through much of coastal New Jersey. Now, if this were to happen, um, somebody could wind up with several inches or more. So we're going we're gonna to watch now from here on, since we're at Tuesday evening, we're going to watch the model trends now going forward to see if we start sh seeing these this north and west shift, which has been something that, uh, as I said just a little while ago, uh, has occurred several times. It occurred several times during the month of November, uh, which uh, brought in not a lot of rain. None of them really were big storms. But you know, th this time of year, especially when you're dealing with cold air you know, and, and uh, the potential for some snow, subtle shifts can be uh, extremely important. Now. Regardless of whether we get anything out of this or not, the longer term pattern here is going to be one where it turns eventually uh, very cold in the eastern part of the United States. And I'll show you why. We're going to uh, put up the uh, jet stream. I'm going to go back to the regular GFS and, and uh, widen out so we can look at the upper pattern. And there you can see that deep, deep trough that runs from northernmost Canada all the way down into the eastern Gulf. The very, very strong ridge that's in the west, which is being dictated by this uh, very, very strong storm that's north of Hawaii that's just sitting there. 
Uh, that keeps the ridge pumped up. And you notice that the storm that's out along 160 west, north of uh, the latitude, the, the longitude of the westernmost Hawaiian Islands, that upper air storm rotates up and around. It really doesn't move. So that ridge in the west continues to pump up. And when, as that's happening early next week, another deep trough is getting ready to swing around in the east. And you can pick it out here uh, in the bend that's just near Lake Superior. That is a strong upper air trough that's diving down and then sharpening up as it lifts up to the northeast. Now, uh, this will precipitate, I believe, uh, the development of some kind of storm along the east coast and will get tight again and the model has actually been fairly consistent with this for a couple of runs um, but um, um, there we go so there it is now on this run it was much further offshore uh, than on the prior run but it does have this developing deep storm it's a 978 pressure and the GFS likes to be further east with these things a lot of times. So, you know, the fact that it just has it there, I think, is important. And if we go to the prior run, uh, it, it had it as well. Uh, it actually really wound it up uh, on this run where it was closer to the coast. It developed just south and east of Cape Cod uh, as a 982 low. And you can see this extensive area of snow on the back side, and it eventually intensified it down into the mid 960s as it moved up into Maine and behind it is frigid air that gets drawn southeastward out of Canada so this would argue that for Wednesday Thursday into Friday of next week we could have a couple of days where daytime temperatures right here along the coast would not get out of the 20s meanwhile it would be very cold everywhere I don't want to leave anybody out here so uh, we can look at the uh, anomalies, look at the uh, temperature anomalies in terms of below normal. Um, the uh, purples start the minus 12, so 12 degrees above below normal uh, or more, uh, 12 degrees or more below normal. All of eastern Canada, uh, much of the Ohio Valley, the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, the southeast, and, e and down to Florida, That this cold push will wind up going all the way down uh, into the southeastern part of the United States and um, into Florida. So uh, we are looking, as I said, at a very dynamic weather pattern that's developing. Uh, the, long, the long, long range, which we can go back and look at in terms of the upper air, uh, really doesn't show too much. Here's that deep trough that the model has in the east. I mean, that's really deep uh, and sharp. So it's no surprise that it develops a uh, storm the way it does. And as we move forward, for the most part, uh, except right near the end, where it likes to pop that ridge up, it looks like it wants to pull the trough out. But you know that could be this run. Um, the uh, prior run did not do that, and you know I see that from time to time with these in-between runs. As you get deep into the long range, it'll throw up some um, you know a different outcome uh, in the long range period where it starts to develop this ridge in the east, and this is you know out at day uh, 12 and 13. But, you know, the, the general signature in Canada remains the same. So even if that were to happen, uh, it doesn't mean that there's going to be a, a, a huge warm up, but there might be some moderation because by the time we get to the end of the period, uh, we are back to this flow coming out of Canada and that ridge is starting to trying to pop back up in the west. That big storm that's out near north of Hawaii between the Aleutians and Hawaii really is going to be the driver of the ridge in the west. So we're going to pay very close attention to that to see when that breaks down. Eventually, all patterns break down. Um, it's a matter of whether they last for a week or do they last for two weeks or they, do they last for you know, two months. Uh, by the way, toward the end of the period, uh, you'll may, you might see up here, uh, there's a east base block that's developing again uh, across eastern Greenland. So that may be a sign as well that this period where we saw the negative North Atlantic Oscillation, or NAO, that showed us the blocking, um, that is the most volatile of, the, uh, of them all. That, that comes and goes rather quickly, relatively speaking. But um, it may go, it may disappear for a little while, but it may come back. And remember, um, you don't need the block in order for it to be cold. We actually lose the blocking signature 
uh, early next week, the big vortex takes over and just stays pretty well locked in place. So uh, you don't need that necessarily need the blocking in, in there. The blocking is probably required if you wanted to say a blockbuster snowstorm to stall off the East Coast. But uh, you know you don't need it if you want it um, to be very cold. Meanwhile, we'll go to uh, Europe because uh, you folks are going to see some real wintry weather here uh, in some places, and it's all being dictated by you know with the weather pattern the way it is here. Um, you know you're getting we're going to get some waves of cold air and precipitation. Uh, here's a, a system that's a very strong storm that moves across. Uh, into the North Sea and gets very intense is going to turn the winds to the north. You get these strong northerlies that are going to come down uh, off the North Sea and from Iceland and Greenland and it does produce a fair amount of these uh, streamers of snow across uh, England and Ireland uh, and on down into uh, the Netherlands and Germany and parts of, uh, of France and even into northern Spain and this continues uh, through the weekend uh, and then after that, you get another, an Atlantic storm that comes in, and there might be enough cold air. It looks like maybe some snow uh, uh, in some places in the British Isles. Another deep storm that moves uh, o over the uh, eastern part of the Isles and into Western Europe. Uh, then uh, after that, uh, it kind of settles down a little bit, uh, perhaps not as cold as these weather systems are coming in from the west. But still look at this uh, ample uh, opportunity here for you guys to see uh, some snow in the next uh, 10 days or so uh, in um, in Britain and Ireland and when we look at the uh, the snowfall and we'll uh, put that up for you then we're going to go back to the US and I'll show you the snowfall for us but look at this this is you know the GFS now granted we know that this is not going to be exactly real but look at how much snow the models producing in centimeters across England virtually the whole uh, the, all, the whole island, England, Scotland, all of it, you know, covered in snow and some additional deep snows for northern England and, and Scotland, uh, snows uh, for certainly the northern part of Ireland, much of France, much of Italy, uh, Germany, the Netherlands, uh, on over into Poland. Uh, this, this is going to be a very active period on both continents. Uh, back to the U.S. we go, and uh, I'll put up the whole U.S. over the next 10 days. Now, uh, I'm thinking that this is going to be a little different when we get to the uh, time. And by the way, there is missing data here. There is a, a problem. I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go to this map, which has probably got a better reflection of the snowfall. This is the positive snow depth. If you're on tropicaltidbits.com, uh, uh, the uh, positive snow depth change maps are probably better than the 10 to 1 ratio maps because this th this will uh, these maps are supposed to account for any melting that occurs or any sleet and that'll perhaps make the maps a bit more accurate. We had a lot of instances last year in situations with marginal temperatures where the models were kicking out uh, some big snow amounts that didn't happen uh, because they were picking up on sleet uh, and uh, making that snow. So uh, that, that th these maps hopefully, we'll see how well they do, we'll take that out of the equation. Notice that uh, west of the Rockies, because of that big ridge, very little activity going on in terms of snowfall for a change. So after um, weeks of, of snows in the Intermountain West, uh, we're seeing that uh, diminish considerably. And uh, in the east, uh, much more activity. They'll probably be, uh, you will probably get that lake effect machine to turn on. Uh, I'll get you a close up here on the east. I mean, there are no big mega amounts being indicated here, and, and that's because of the fact that the GFS, remember, it's got that strong storm that develops just offshore uh, for uh, the middle part of next week. If I go back one run where it had it closer to the coast, and again, we're purely speculating here. This is open speculation is what we're doing. We're not forecasting this. Uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, at least give you an idea that uh, we've got, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Now here's the one from uh, six hours ago, and you can see that the uh, the storm uh, the uh, storm that it tried to develop here in the east was closer to the coast. So it shows you know some bigger amounts uh, from uh, northern New Jersey on up through uh, New England and parts of upstate New York. You know fair amount of lake effect going on, and of course very active uh, snows uh, being indicated uh, for uh, 
much of southern Canada. Uh, we're seeing uh, some uh, snows also for southeastern Canada here as uh, this pattern uh, takes, takes shape. And uh, actually, even the coastal areas of uh, Nova Scotia and, uh, and Newfoundland uh, participating in all of this. So you start to get to some big amounts, bigger amounts as you go uh, to the north and west. So a very, very active pattern going forward. I think uh, you winter weather lovers, uh, you know, I honestly believe that with all that's going on in terms of the dynamics in the upper atmosphere, and I'll just, you know, I'll put it on the line now, uh, the fact that, you know, there's probably some things going on too that we're not see that models aren't seeing, that won't be picked up until, you know, pretty much the last minute, well, let's say relatively speaking, the last minute, perhaps the models won't pick up on those things until we get um, inside the uh, five-day period or the seven-day period. Uh, so I got to think that with this cold pattern the way it is and it's, it's dynamic that the upper air is, I would be surprised if my area does not see at least one snowfall uh, out of this over the next uh, 10 days or so. It would be kind of a shock actually, but wouldn't be unprecedented. I've seen it, uh, you know, I've seen it over the years in my experience uh, where, uh, you know, you get all this cold air and uh, it's around and, uh, for a long time and you're sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting and uh, storms just don't come or uh, even the basic amount of moisture doesn't show up. Okay, so let's uh, give a big hello to everybody. Uh, you know, Pandas, you've been looking for some snow in Ohio. Well, you know, when that uh, trough swings to the east on Saturday, that upper air trough to the west, you might get some. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and Anne-Marie Passaretti wants to see flurries in Nassau. Well, maybe you'll see a little bit more in Nassau County. That's Nassau County on Long Island, not Nassau in the Bahamas. And uh, David Schwartz, California is going to need, they need rain, but they're not going to get it with that big ridge that's uh, going to be uh, in, in the uh, western states. Um, always smiling, couldn't believe that North Africa getting snow. Well, you know, the, that cold air extended pretty far to the south. It's certainly the, ele you know, elevated areas, uh, absolutely. Um, but it, it does happen. Um, uh, back, back before Thanksgiving, we were said to be cold in my area, uh, and maybe a white Thanksgiving. Um, Ruin Nation. Okay, you got to tell me where your area is, Ruin Nation, because uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, where you're talking about. Um, we were said to be cold in my area, and maybe a white Thanksgiving. I don't know, did I? I, I don't remember using the phrase white Thanksgiving, so it couldn't be me. Um, uh, oh, and then you, okay, two to three days before cold or, or storm, and all of a sudden it warms up and no storm. Stranger things have happened. Uh, I, you know, all sorts of weird things can happen depending on your location uh, in terms of the small scale environment. Uh, so it would help if you just, just to tell me where you are. Um, models and Golden Twister does point out correctly models have been very consistent here with what's happening. Uh, yes, always smiling. Uh, Ireland and UK getting some uh, nasty weather. Uh, okay, Jason Schaefer, you're bringing up the warm ground theory. I want to bang my head when I hear that. Th that is the biggest fallacy. It really is. I, I don't get it. Uh, we had a whole winter last year. I'm not yelling at you, Jason, okay? You know I love you almost as much as I love my laundry. Uh, but uh, I don't get the warm ground thing at all. I really don't. We had... Uh, we had snowstorm after uh, three snowstorms last year in the eastern part of the United States within 12 hours of setting record highs in the 60s. Okay, and in some cases, I think on the one in March, uh, somebody might have actually seen temperatures up into the 70s the day before. The warm ground theory doesn't doesn't hold water if it snows hard enough. And second of all, it hasn't been that warm. We've been seeing temperatures a little bit above average. Uh, over you know and not that much above average really a little bit above average the nights have been cold we've been down in the 20s in many locations because we've had a lot of nights with clear skies and radiational cooling so i don't think that that applies here what's more important is intensity if you wind up with light snows with 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 no intensity then yeah the, you probably won't get any kind of accumulation but if you get into some steady snow 
uh, for a few hours, the, you know, that warm ground theory just doesn't hold water. I'm sorry. I, you know, the other thing is the sun angle. That's another thing I can't. It drives me crazy when people bring up the sun angle. Because first of all, there's no sun angle issue if it snows at night, okay, uh, and uh, that, which is obvious. And uh, the second thing is, if that were true, then nobody would see snow in, in, in any time during the month, the uh, months uh, from from uh, mid to late mid February uh, on into early April. So you know we kind of have to stop get away from those two things. And I don't use it um, in my calculations in trying to figure out whether we're going to how much snow we're going to get. Um, I use uh, intensity, uh, and uh, I'll 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 use. Uh, you know how much liquid precipitation we're going to get, and try to translate that into snow. Uh, and all it, all you need is the temperature to be very close to freezing, even the 33. You could you could certainly do it. Um, and always smiling is telling us it's minus three to minus four Celsius. So you're in the 20s where you are uh, up uh, in the, the British Isles. Um, Anthony Orr uh, was the tame pattern. Usually tame pattern in the month of November. Assign the atmosphere reloading or grouping up. Well, Anthony, you know, we spent the whole, ever since we had that big storm at the end of October, which finally put the uh, a knife through the heart of the ridge in the east, uh, that's what the atmosphere has been doing, basically, for the last four or five weeks. It's been gradually uh, uh, reshaping uh, the pattern across the North Atlantic and North America. And I have said many times, pattern changes are not... Uh, instantaneous moments in time. They are long processes almost always. And they are grinding, uh, they are frustrating if you are, you know, if you are uh, rooting for, cer for certain kind, uh, a certain kind of weather to occur. Uh, they can be very frustrating, but in the end they do get to where they're going to go and we are seeing that now. It's taken almost five weeks to go from that breakdown of the ridge in the east uh, which happened at the end of October to here we are in the first week of December and we are uh, seeing the establishment of this massive trough uh, this massive long wave trough that's running from northern Canada all the way down uh, into the southeastern part of uh, the US and eventually uh, into Florida um, now, in terms, I know some of you are already, you know, you're asking me some specific questions for specific areas, um, and uh, that's going to be hard for me to do off the top of my head, so I'm going to just have to defer those to uh, maybe tomorrow. I'll try to get some better idea on how this all plays out, because I know a lot of places are going to see, um, you know, probably going to see some snow uh, with any one of these systems. And uh, th this way, I can I can at least help you out with uh, whatever your questions are. Um, the Epic Hunter, Suffolk County, maybe one to three inches. Uh, Suffolk County on Long Island. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, yes, I think that's uh, that's certainly possible. Right now, again, I'm feeling comfortable for my where I am, which is long. You know, literally geographically where I am, which is Long Island, uh, which is be um, a, a coating to a couple of inches. Uh, I, I'm gonna watch. You know, watch closely. Uh, and we should be watching weather models closely for a very, very, you know, slow shift uh, to the west. Or maybe, you know, the wiggle room is both ways. This could still wind up being further east and flatter. You know, there's always that possibility, too. So we'll see, um, we'll see what the models tell us. Jason, no worries. I'm, you know, I just, that, it, the, the warm, you know, the warm ground theory and the sun angle theory really to me, the sun angle idea, they're not theories. I mean, the warm ground theory maybe is a theory. But remember, the warm ground too is not a, it, it's not a thermal plate, really. It's not like, the, you know, the top of your stove. It doesn't stay warm. It basically reflects the air temperature. It may take a little longer for the ground to get, uh, to equalize with what the air temperature is. But, you know, it's not like it's 100 degrees, for God's sake. Um, oh, you have Suffolk County in Massachusetts. Okay, true. And by the way, you know, uh, Delvin, you in Boston, I think, you know, you might wind up doing fairly well with all of this if, the, if everything sets up right, particularly with the second system. Okay, uh, but uh, we've got a lot of time to watch that one. The, uh, the dynamic pattern is going to at least give us a lot of time uh, in order to, to watch how these things uh, take shape and, um, 
and develop. And uh, Metal Mastodon, it did make low 60s today ahead of this front. Not a surprise. It didn't get out of the 40s yesterday. We had uh, near average temperatures the last couple of days. Today's our one shot above normal. We're going to be uh, down tomorrow, falling through the 40s. We'll be in the 20s and low 30s by Thursday, uh, Thursday morning. Uh, low to mid 40s for highs on uh, Thursday and Friday. With arriving clouds and a north, you know, a northerly wind, we probably won't see temperatures getting out of the 30s. So I think that will more than compensate uh, for whatever warmth the ground is picking up uh, from today. And uh, Dominic uh, Trattoria, this is, you know, this thing, this first thing is going to be um, late Friday night and into Saturday. And Adam Fitz, uh, yeah, the blizzard last year, again, the one in February in particular, the, literally the day before, we set record highs in the 60s. And uh, New York City got nine inches out of that. And uh, as uh, one of my uh, uh, friends pointed out, that that was the the highest temperature, highest snow back-to-back -back combination in the 140-some-odd years of uh, New York City re weather records. So, uh, as I said, uh, the warm ground didn't mean a thing then, and I don't think it's going to mean anything uh, for uh, Friday night into Saturday. Intensity is the most important thing. How intense is that precip? If it's, you know, if you've got moderate snow, uh, snow falling at an inch an hour, that rate, that, that will more than compensate for whatever couple of degrees warmer that the ground initially is. And uh, the westward trend in the models and the ensembles, well, the ensembles are, are further west and north than the, the operational. So uh, the in-between run, Looked to me like it went a little bit, just a little bit, but it was, um, it did go a little bit northwest, a little bit higher with the amount. So let's see if that trend continues overnight and uh, during the day on Wednesday. So, you know, for, from a weather forecasting standpoint going forward, this is a very exciting time, um, um, you know, because we like to get our heads into this sort of stuff and, and the challenge is there. So um, we are going to do just that. Uh, Tom uh, Adams, uh, yes, if you put in, um, I think the code for the mugs is Santa mugs in small letters, uh, in one word, Santa mugs. So if you type in the discount code Santa mugs, uh, you will get 15% uh, off. And if you type in Jostradamus, you can't use them both. But uh, if you order, uh, you know, if you order over 50 bucks, uh, Joe Stradamus is the other code um, that uh, you can get. Uh, that's he's referring to my store. So you know, if you want to get uh, something to put in your Christmas stocking, or perhaps you want to uh, put it into someone else's Christmas stocking, you can go to the uh, Joe Stradamus store and go ahead and do that. I know, shameless plug, but you know what? I got to make a living too. And uh, thank you for those of you, by the way, who have hit my PayPal account. Um, I really appreciate that very much. <clears throat> you know, for me, if I can get a cigar or, or a cup of coffee or uh, anything like that, uh, you know, that's fine. That's great, actually. Uh, I uh, really ap appreciate it. You know, I'm, I'm really attempting very much to um, build up my YouTube channel uh, to uh, mega proportions. So if you're new on my YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, it's uh, absolutely free uh, to subscribe, and you'll get notified every time there is a uh, new video on board. And of course, uh, you know you can go to my website, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, which you can link to right from my uh, YouTube channel page. Just look up at the banner on the top of the channel page in the lower corner. You'll see little icons for Facebook, Google+, and for Twitter, and for my website. So you can go there and uh, from here you can go uh, anywhere uh, Cynthia thank you again by the way uh, for uh, for hitting PayPal and uh, again check out the Joe Stradamus store because hey who wouldn't want a Joe Stradamus Christmas mug uh, on Christmas morning uh, to um, uh, to drink from <laughs> okay so, all right folks so listen I'm gonna be doing a YouTube tonight on you on uh, I'm sorry tonight on Facebook uh, after 7.30, uh, we're going to have uh, the Joe and Joe show. Uh, I'll be joined by, by my colleague, my Fios One News colleague, Joe Rayo, uh, and we will be uh, talking about um, this very thing, we'll, uh, the weather pattern going forward, and uh, we will uh, have a little bit more 
uh, of the weather models as they're finishing their late afternoon runs. We'll have the rest of the ensemble, so we'll be able to take a look at that. And uh, so join us. It'll be a little after 7.30 on my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. So uh, do pop in, and uh, we will see you at uh, this time tomorrow.